monster. Rawr. Here he's back. Okay. Um, yeah, so Warrior's Path to Crash Zone Alpha to North. The ship bands are here as follows. NFGF has banned the Stalingrad. RNG has banned the Venezia. Um, Venezia, I gotta say that I feel as though Venezia, from what I've seen, has not been the game changer that everybody, I think, assumes it would be after its uh, 15 minutes of fame during the Season 9 clan battles. <laughs> but uh, Stalingrad, of course... Very, very punchy guns, long range, strong armor, good radar. So, Yeah, I, I'm going to have to echo. I'm a little surprised by the Venezia ban, um, especially because it seems that the, the bans carry through all three maps. I mean, it'd be a yes. little different if it was like a ban per map, but if this is just a one-time gig, like, the Venezia, really that scary? Um, maybe oh. NFJF has some kind of like Venezia Pro that they're just like, ah, oh, not today, buddy. Yeah, could be. Could very well be. Um, you know, at this point, enough games have been played and enough games have been streamed that it's entirely possible um, they've seen previous games and sort of went, that's going to be a problem. Let's just take it off the, uh, out of the equation. I mean, at this point, I almost... I'm sort of been thinking, like, which which are the best to uh, to ban at this point? Like, what's... What does something to which there's very little counterplay? And I almost want to argue that the Daring is one of the best bands you can make if, for example, um, you know, if, if you're finding that to be a problem just because uh, there's not really a whole lot of other DDs like the Daring. If your Daring gets banned, what do you take instead? There aren't any relatively stealthy gunboats with quick quickfire smokes like that that can function. I mean, that's true. Um, technically, I, I mean, as silly as that would be, the only thing I can think of that has quick fire smokes would be, <laughs> laughably enough, the Yu Yang. Uh, because oh, I believe yeah. the Yu Yang is kind of an analog for a gearing. So theoretically, if you can hit stuff out at range with a gearing, you can hit it with a Yu Yang. And right. again, you'd have that faster uh, smoke. I, I don't know. I think the Daring is a staple, not because it's a monster. I mean, a well-played Daring can be a monster, but... Because if if nothing else, the daring is something that can go into a cap, get slapped around a little bit, heal mm -hmm. back up, and go back into the cap. And I mean, right. outside of what, the Holland? I mean, there's really just not a lot of other options as far mm -hmm. as what can do that. Maybe the Grozovoy, I guess? Because that, that has okay. a heal and a, and a smoke yep. too, right? Um, yep. we def and a uh, gunboat. It's a good gunboat with 10 km torpedoes, just like the Daring. Yep. Yeah, and we did actually see we did actually see a Graz earlier, so I mean I suppose that's kind of in the meta. I mean the only thing I can think of for the for the Venezia is that either A, somebody just was too good with it, or B, I I, I don't know if I actually expect to see anybody go down this route, but like if you really had a heavy destroyer comp, pulling away some of that zap would allow you to have that, or at least to threaten it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a psychological freakout ban. <laughs> maybe who knows? Um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. I mean, Venezia. Yeah, I don't quite. I feel like Venezia can be sort of replaced by say, I don't know, a Nevsky. I feel like that's the closest analog to it. Really, it doesn't have the same throw weight as Venezia, but it's skinny, it's quick, it's maneuverable, it's long range, and it fires lots of shells. It's good against CDs, so. I don't know, man. I guess we'll just sort of have to. Uh, we'll sort of just have to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, daring, daring. I would think is the most compelling ban you could make at this point. Maybe daring or Nevsky. Actually, Nevsky. I've seen a lot of those be used, be smoked up by some of these good teams. Um, I I have to wonder actually why the Marceau has not been banned um, because I the Marceau it's not going to cap. But if you prime yourself to really just like roll with something to go in there, we haven't seen right. a lot of open water Colbert kind of at all. Uh, we just haven't. We've seen Colbert's that pretty much run around kind of doing Colbert stuff. But in general, when we see a Marceau, it's because somebody wants to make plays. They want to force the issue. They want to get something dead. Um, and I, destroyers typically have some kind of ability to trade. And while you can spot a Marceau, it's a hell of a problem to kill a Marceau. And until you kill it or you get it extremely low health, like it's just this present threat that's just waiting to YOLO down a DD or waiting to run around a corner and slam torps or something. Like, right. I'm actually surprised that the Marceau has not had more attention. 
That's true. And actually, I'm trying to think we've seen, I feel like in the games we've cast so far, we've seen one, maybe two Marceau, and we've seen about the same number of Clever. Um, the Clever obviously showed its strength there as the uh, CAG, the CAG Clever came around the corner, completely YOLO to Kremlin, and then threatened the Stalingrad before getting shot down by Stalingrad secondaries, I think it was. Um, which is hilarious in its own way, but... Um, yeah, very interesting how that works. Um, you know, I really, because I hadn't really put much stock into thinking about what are the best bands, like what are the most effective bands that can't really be, uh, you know, can't really be, you ban the Yamato, okay, you take a Shikishima. You ban the Montana, you take Ohio. Generally, there are analogs that are slightly different, but fundamentally the same. So, I but Grazavoy and Daring, I, you're right. I think those are pretty, those are pretty uh, distinctly the same. Yeah, we used the Graz uh, fairly extensively back in season nine uh, when we were when carriers were introduced. Uh, that was the right. the initial kind of like we'll use this because it can provide defensive fire. Maybe some flak puffs will do something. Plus, it's got the heal. Plus, it's got the smoke. So, I mean, it had a whole bunch of tricks to it. Yeah. But I mean, if you're gonna go with the ban, I would have to assume like it's less about screw this OP ship. Because, I mean, the Smallend isn't available. The Smallend got removed. The Thunderer's not available. The Thunderer got right. removed. Like, a lot of the, the real OP outliers don't exist, right? So, if instead, if you're going to use your band, then theoretically, it's either something that you suck playing against, <laughs> the enemy team is amazing playing as, or you want to use it to bolster a strategy. So, like, if you wanted to go heavy destroyer or heavy something or other, well, then you want to remove the anti-DD threat and one of those things would be, if not a Venezia, it would also be a Marceau, so we could go both ways. But the game is afoot. Yep, game is afoot. We're going to go ahead and pop in here, take a look at what we've got on the board. I'm going to start with NFJF. Uh, on their side, we have Yamato Kremlin, followed by three Des Moines and a Moskva, then Daring, Kleber, and Yu Yang. So this is, in fact, going to be a three DD Strat with three Des Moines. That's astounding. I on a, this this is a pretty wide map. There's a lot of open space too. I'm interested at the uh, the choice of so many Des Moines. Yeah, that is a, that is quite the investment in uh, in America. Uh, over on the other side, we've got a Yamato, Montana. So the Montana is going to have some movement to it. Yamato mostly going to pick a spot and live there. We've got a Des Moines, a Salem, so a little bit of diversity, and then a double Nevsky, as we've seen many times, although they do seem to be pointing in different directions, and a double Shima daring. So they've got some definite low detection kind of stuff and a daring for contest, as we were talking about earlier. Absolutely. So uh, basically, the question is, well, are these teams going to go ahead and throw, oh my lord, are okay so clever and yu yang for nfjf are both headed for c at the moment we might see one of them split off and head into b uh could be the clever using his speed to get there daring shimikaze shimikaze all splitting up for rng's side gonna take all three caps um i would have expected that from both teams to basically play all three caps salem nevsky for uh, rng moving out here to the a side which is a very open water side not surprising to see the nevsky heading that way des moines nevsky yamato also heading towards C. So they're doing a very, uh, RNG is doing a very, very traditional, very safe conservative uh, deployment here. Nothing wrong with seeing that. Um, what's going on with NFJF? I am confused. So NFJF has Daring escorting a Moskva Yamato Des Moines over to the Alpha side, but the Daring is not even pointing at the cap. So that's going to be delayed. Maybe this is going to be a holding pattern, but even then I'm not sure how they're going to get set up into it. Meanwhile, the other push is over to Charlie with a whole bunch of nobody gives a shit over at B. Uh, we have a Kleber escorted by a Yu Yang, which maybe it's a radar Yu Yang, but the best I can assume is that the Colbert is looking to round the corner and surprise them effort with well, that Shimikaze over on the other side, but with a double, well, a Des Moines and a Nevsky backing them up, I mean, that's semi-suicidal. But no, the Colbert has in fact stopped while the Yu Yang is heading forward to scout, so he just threw away the Colbert speed. I'm, I'm confused. Why? I'm confused too. I don't understand why the Colbert has decided to stop behind this rock unless maybe he disconnected. Um, he has not moved. I His think, guns are moving. I think I'm, they would mulligan if that happened. You know, shoot a ship or so something? Too. Yeah, shoot a ship. I, I'm so confused because uh, the, the Clever's early on, I mean, the, the early function of that Clever is to get somewhere super fast and hopefully catch another DD unawares and end his life right in there. But 
I, I don't quite see the function of putting him behind that rock and then waiting. I, I, I guess he's waiting for the Yu Yang to get out. I mean, we'll see. He that that delay may actually put him right in front of these Shimakaze torpedoes. Um, depending on on what he chooses to do here, I'm I am terribly terribly confused. I don't know what the function of this clever is. I think the Kleber of Erethin, Erethrin, is uh, hanging back, looking for maybe a, a YOLO potential. So if that Kleber rounded the corner early and the, Shim the Shima outspotted him, well then the Kleber is spotted, there's a Nevsky, there's a Des Moines, the Shima can just run away. There's all that information and the Kleber doesn't get used. Right. So maybe he was waiting for the Yu Yang to kind of spot a target, maybe bait a target, and then the Kleber just YOLOs hard onto it and maybe sees to, if they can get a DD kill. Meanwhile, over at A, we do have the long-term move from Braxton and the Daring, who does seem to be pushing off a Shima. Undoubtedly, they've RPF'd each other, and Braxton is diving for the island, which is going to keep him safe and probably help A fall, although the Shima is looking for the spot with a Nevsky that's going to have some angles on that Daring. Meanwhile, Bravo has fallen. Any big papa is actually leaving it, while the Des Moines of Gamer Kemp is just kind of, you know, stay in Bravo just in case or something. But uh, that that's just giving points over to RNG for the foreseeable future. I think my eyes are on Braxton and A, although still curious about what's going on in Charlie. Yeah, I, I can't look away from Charlie. The deep water torpedo is going harmlessly right underneath Dark Steel Shimakaze as uh, he's... Uh, NFJ of Yu Yang is attempting to connect with the Nevsky here of uh, F1 Toaster. So Shimakaze has been pushed out by the radar of the Des Moines, but he's going to get back in the cap here and attempt to contest it against the Yu Yang. I believe the Shimakaze will outspot the Yu Yang. So then the Kleber is just sort of functioning as an open water gunboat cruiser at the, in the meantime. And I don't know that that's the most effective use for it. Uh, Yu Yang taking some fire now from that Nevsky of F1 Toaster. Going to go ahead and... Uh, Yep, okay, so Shimikaze of Darksteel also taking some damage here as the Des Moines radar now back up. Good grief, that Shimikaze is in fact taking quite a bit of damage, and uh, I think we see what the Kleber's purpose is now. He's just there to push off another DD. However, I feel like if that's what you're going to do, frankly, a Nevsky might be a better choice. I, yeah, with the detection on a Kleber, that could certainly turn into a surface ship. I mean, you'd be losing the speed, but at the moment, it's just hanging out in the same spot on the map, so the speed is not mattering very much. Uh, Braxton, over on FNFJF, has been pushed off the island. He left voluntarily, got radared by a Salem, and left a piece of his uh, ship behind. Other than that, the Moskva of Capit Capita Suita has uh, backing up, taking some shell fire, but in general, uh, nothing much happening over at A except general attrition. As Crazy Kraut takes a few more shells, and that, those actually connected, but Salem's going to be able to heal through it, so that's not too bad. I have to say, as you've been watching Charlie as much, how in the world did Jackie Jack take about a third of his health gone? And um, as even he's been pretty ensconced behind that island, Dark Skill down to half is looking to back up but i don't know if he's going to find any purchase with the des moines of uh, vet bubbles as c falls officially to nfjf yeah uh jackie jack's des moines got cracked by the yamato of stug from across the map early on took about twenty thousand hp damage there oh huge huge hit on crazier kraut of uh, rng by again by stug's yamato the overmatch potential of those 18 inch guns on salem's and des moines is just really showing itself there uh, Braxton earlier had smoked up for protection, I guess, but ended up losing sight of all of RNG's cruisers out and out here in the middle. So um, he's now back to open watering, attempting to uh, spot mainly Crazier Kraut Salem. Let's see, is this the end of Crazier Kraut? No. Okay, shots going into the rock there, dodging him. Back at sea, yeah, in fact, Erethrin's Kleber managed to dive that rock at sea and uh, take it. So again, Kleber now doing something useful. Good to see. Uh, happy to be wrong in that regard, as the Yu Yang is starting to take some damage here. Um, I feel like it's just going to be a bit of a... Uh, please tell me. Please tell me that CV Nep Nep Rebirth's torpedoes are not aimed at Sh Dark Steel Shimikaze. It really, really looks like they are. You cannot hurt a DD with deep water torpedoes from a Yu Yang. I hope somebody told Nep Nep Rebirth that before COT started. I mean, there's a Nevsky that's down the way behind the Shimikaze. You know... <laughs> but that uh, is actually quite quite a miracle as Dark Steel has uh, been able to spot and warn, hey, both of those torps are there. Nonetheless, C still holding as the Des Moines of Jackie Jack is able to take some junks out of the Yu Yang. Uh, maybe he would have knocked the targeting sensors for those torpedoes into alignment and uh, more likely to hit the Nevsky on the next pass. Uh, the daring of any big papa has rotated off of Bravo and has NFJF has not had any pressure over at Bravo. That cap has stood the test of time as A swings over two to one. 
we've got RNG now taking the caps on the field, but NFJF with the Kleber looking to take Bravo shortly. Question is, will Jackie Jack be able to intercept him and get some meaningful damage in before he gets to the island? Yeah, that's the that's the real question here. Uh, Gamer Kemp taking some damage here, but uh, yeah, it looks like Aerithrin's Kleber getting away scot-free as he rushes right into B. I don't know that anybody can stop him once he's in there. This is, of course, one of the uh, best uses of the Clever or the Marceau or any uh, any of these French Tier 10 DDs. They're very quick and they're hard to kill, uh, but mainly the speed is really where they, they come into uh, their own um, as they are able to relocate. And as long as there's nothing there to contest them too hard, they can just rush in, take a cap, run off, go do something else. Um, Shimakaze of Westo from RNG now uh, looks like he's pushing in. I don't quite know where he's going, but he's looking like he's going right into the torpedoes of Braxton. No, they're a little too slow. Okay. Braxton himself now coming under a lot of fire in the A cap. Uh, fire from at least two ships, Daring versus Daring, but Braxton is uh, much the worse for wear. Again, we're seeing another Daring versus Daring where it's um, uh, you, you must have all your guns on on point and firing. Otherwise, you will lose that. It looks like Braxton taking huge hits now from uh, the Nevsky. And any big pop, is he going to go down here is the question. Feels like it. He's already down to three and probably going to go even lower soon. But the Jukes, man, Boom. aren't going to be enough. The Salem's radar was enough to keep him lit. And eventually that got the kill. So that's going to open up a the A flank now has no destroyer for NFJF. And believe me when I say DD's OP, that's going to put uh, NFJF in a bit of a bind. Though they do have double radar, one of those DDs can absolutely rotate back to Bravo. And I believe any big papa is already in the direction to do it. They're going to be putting some pressure back on B probably in about two to three minutes. Question is if Erythrin is going to move to YOLO something? The Colbert is pointing his nose in the direction of the enemy and continuing to move forward. Yep. Uh, he might look to make a play on that Yamato. I, there's two options. He can either move right into uh, Jackie Jack's Des Moines, take a lot of damage on his way in and YOLO that Des Moines, which I think he would probably be able to do, or better yet, going for that Yamato. The question is, however, uh, Wandering Bread's Yamato going to see this. Uh, looks like Wandering Bread may have actually beached on purpose or by accident uh, to stop his momentum, but he's going to start reversing here any second as Darksteel taking some shots from both the Kleber, the Des Moines, and the Kremlin, and possibly the Yu Yang. We'll just see as the Yu Yang making a, a flanking maneuver here to try to deep water torp that Yamato of Wandering Bread, and that, I, I, I would say, barring any I think short of a miracle, Wandering Bread is going to take multiple deep water torpedoes here. Um, yeah, I bit of a standstill. However, NFJF now sitting on two caps. Points about the same, just a little over 600 each. We have a four minutes, 40 seconds until a NFJF victory. However, RNG is sitting with an extra victory. Or sorry, an extra kill. My bad. <laughs> extra kill indeed. Uh, so it did look like those shells knocked Nepnep's targeting uh, computers back online as those torps are looking kind of good. I think that first one's gonna nip right past the nose but the second yep. one's on target uh, okay. i don't think that's don't think the one after is going to be there but nonetheless that was a hit that knocked the engine that might be the thing that causes a damage con which might cause fires and all sorts of fun stuff for wandering bread so we'll see if that bread ends up getting baked kind of charred a little crispy maybe I have to cut off some edges over on the other side uh the dairy of any big papa decided not to go to b uh, he wanted to throw torps at stuff. The Yamato of Stug was able to um, get the heck out without eating anything. There were multiple torps thrown his way, and looks like any big papa has course corrected. Once again, nose forward toward the points. We've got Double Des Moines actually, a little action over in Bravo. X Gamer versus Jackie Jack trading some blows. Yeah, so any big papa now uh, has made his second redeployment. He's moving from A back to B. Knows the clever is not in a place to threaten him. This is where uh, in a in a highly skilled, very chess like uh, format like COTS, it's really important to keep tabs on where the enemy DDs are or potentially could be. As any big papa here knows, hey, I can hop right into B, sit on the south side, be safe from Gamer Kemp's Des Moines, and if Erethrin wants to come back, he's gonna have to make a full like twenty point turn. In that canal to turn around and come after me so uh good play by rng knowing the um layout of the map and of the players um shimikaze's dark steel i want to give props to him as well he's doing i think the exact right thing which is he's staying in the fight at sea he's never given up slinging torpedo after torpedo at the kremlin and then des moines he is not giving them a free to pass to push through sea uh for nfjf and try to wrap up the yamato or the des moines it's great to see, hey, we're not going to just abandon it. 
and let them walk through. We're going to continue to keep them honest here as any big papa starting to take B, but that forces Gamer Kemp's Des Moines to move into B. We'll see if RNG can take advantage of that. Okay, we start to see some aggressive moves over at A as newbie gamer dude. I can tell you personally as a mod of my channel, he is a very aggressive player, has decided to slam in on the gas and start pushing through A, putting guns on the Des Moines, the Des Moines as well as the motto of Stug. Question is, the <coughs> Des Moines of X gamer Kemp, NFJF's Des Moines, has moved open water, oddly enough, but crossed enough of the channel that I believe he's safe from the guns of newbie gamer but is able to block the take of Bravo. Any big papa taking shells from a Clavert now. 18 to 14k, Clavert is a fearsome opponent, especially while that reload booster is up, which it looks to be at the moment. Daring is going to start snuggling an island. Question is if the Des Moines could be able to make a play as even more shells come out at any big papa. Bravo looks to be a lynch a linchpin on how this match is going to go. There's only 40 points between the two. If Bravo is able to fall and there's no DD for a retake, that's going to end up going really well for whoever claims Bravo. Certainly. Um, while you were talking there, the clever of Erethrin taking a huge hit from a Shimakaze torpedo as he was making that 20-point Austin Powers turn we were talking about, uh, unable to dodge it as those torpedoes came right up the canal and then right up his butt. Such is what happens to Klebers that turn in a canal. Uh, like you were saying, Gamer Kemp open watering with his Des Moines here. He's now taking some damage from any Big Papa a little bit. They're trading odd shots here, but he is somewhat safe at the moment until looks like the Salem of Crazy Kraut now taking shots at him. They're not great shots, but they are shots as Jackie Jack's Des Moines coming up here like Jaws to see the broadside of... Uh, of Gamer Kemp, but torpedoes from the Clever oh, are going buddy. to completely obliterate him. This is huge. Jackie Jack getting taken down by Erethrin's Clever torpedoes. That is big, as that keeps Gamer Kemp in the fight. I don't know what anime it was, but I know there's something where Erethrin was thinking to himself, you're already dead. Meanwhile, the Des Moines goes, Nani! And then explodes before our very eyes. And that, <laughs> once again, is going to be the difference between whether Bravo is going to be held by Team A or Team B. It has not been decided. However, the Clobert, which once had 19,000 health, now has four. The Daring of any Big Papa still has 13. And unless the Des Moines of X Gamer is going to start going, well, unless X Gamer is going to perform some kind of gamer turn, potentially in front of a Montana. Oh. I don't know how this changes. Shimikaze, Darksteel from RNG, getting taken down by Concentrated Des Moines and Yu Yang Fire. He uh, did the Lord's work there for a very long time, but now, now the time is nigh for RNG as NFJF. Only a minute away from winning game one out of three here. Uh, they need to start getting aggressive. They've blocked the B cap. No points coming in there. Uh, clever of Erethrin, much the worse for where could get killed by the daring of any big papa. Uh, but now the Des Moines of Gamer Camp making a move. Will any big papa? It looks to me like he's about to YOLO. He's going to try and shoot down the Clabert and torp the Des Moines. Let's see how this goes. I think it's going to oh. hurt, but that Clabert is extremely low. If he's able to get a kill somehow before he goes down, that would be some points. Oh. But it is not to be NFJF no. taking game one. Game one going to NFJF. Well played to both, but NFJF really... Um, some ballsy plays there. Uh, that that clever in the middle. I I stand corrected. I was I was poo pooing the choice and the positioning of that clever. And now I must eat my words because uh, they did a great job. So congratulations to both. Game one going to. Let's go ahead and throw this out here. Uh, game one going to NFJF. Absolutely. A uh, whole lot of crazy what the heck is going on kind of action. Uh, RNG looked like that push over at Alpha, and Newbie Gamer Dude is famed for his aggression, at least on my channel, because he is constantly in a div with me and he is constantly YOLOing four to five enemies <laughs> at the same time. The real trick is when you watch him rip down three or four of them as he YOLOs those three to four enemies. Um, he did actually stop in Alpha, probably not wanting to overcommit while, you know, pressure's on the line. This is a high-end tournament. Don't want to throw a ship away. But if he was able to keep on going and potentially collect the scalp off of one and maybe two cruisers, that would have been a huge amount of point swing that just did not go RNG's way. The other big thing going to be those torps. Nani! That went ahead and took that uh, Des Moines out before he was able to get help into Bravo. That pretty much sealed the deal right there. And then especially with Darksteel finally being 
taken out in the Shima. Yep. He was able to give so much support over on that sea flank, but radar after radar, piece by piece by piece, eventually, like anybody that's got some cookies, you finally ate the last one and there's just nothing left. So that's just a sad time for all. Yep, um, you're absolutely right. I think the, the game was fully decided when the RNG Des Moines pushed into B to, it was Jackie, Jackie Jack? pushed into B to confront Gamer Kemp. I think he would have had him dead to rights because Gamer Kemp was at a full broadside to avoid a uh, crossfire, but he would have been totally open to Jackie Jack. However, clutch torpedoes coming in from Erethrin's uh, erstwhile clever that sat there in the middle, taking a Shima torpedo for his trouble. Um, yeah, those torpedoes just absolutely annihilating that Des Moines on his way in. So uh, well played to both teams. Congratulations, NFJF taking game one. Um, my question to you, Oskans, is do you feel as though the bands, remember they had uh, NFJF band Stali and RNG band Venezia, do you feel like the lack of Venezia really made any difference there? Do you, do you feel like a Venezia would have made a difference? Well, RNG Bandit, uh, if there was a Venezia in the north, I, I don't even see how they could have fit one on that map. So it could certainly be like a late game sort of play. Um, right. We were talking about, well, I was talking about a Marceau band, which wouldn't have mattered at all because nobody played the Marceau. I, I don't think there were any bands that really could have overly affected that. If they if you ban Des Moines, then you just bring a Salem. If you ban Salem, they bring Des Moines. So that was probably the most prevalent thing that we saw. I don't know if the open water Nevskis, I mean, maybe they, they contributed more than I'm expecting, but I just don't think that was really the thing that made it happen. The question I saw, your your suggestion on bearing the daring, I think, that was probably the thing. If they had changed the daring, we have seen, as you pointed out, daring on daring combat over and over. I mean, right. who better <clears throat> who better to, to rip into British people than other British people at the same time? Because that's just kind of the way that it goes. Uh, if the daring was gone, we might have seen Grazes, but without Hydro, without any sense of maybe security, I don't know if it would have been as aggressive and people might have played even safer against Against the Des Moines that were out right yeah um I, I can't tell either if uh I mean that was to me that that game was very much decided by torpedoes and Des Moines <laughs> you know um I, I I think people oftentimes forget just how influential the Des Moines has been throughout the history of of competitive world of warships um after carriers were introduced into clan battles the Des Moines was essentially persona non grata as uh, they they just they just don't have the ability to fight at range that's provided by vision from the carriers or um, I mean or or have enough AA HP armor to deal with being dive bombed or torpedoed by carriers. So uh, now that there are no carriers, the Des Moines really does show how it shines in these matches with uh, close island to island. I guess incrementalism I want to call it. Maybe that's if that's pretentious. Maybe that's a pretentious word. <laughs> but um, just because you mentioned Des Moines and Carriers, I would like to point out that please. I think we went against Gaishu's clan, which had used Carriers getting all the way up in the in the season or whatever, and then they decided, no, we will not take the carrier. They started running battleships or whatever all the way up right. in, in Hurricane, which was insane silliness. That was the first time in a long time that I've seen not only Des Moines, but fighter plane Des Moines yes. <laughs> and <laughs> in bulk, actually, <laughs> which yeah. was really That's hilarious true. because you'd have these little groups of dudes. And while they might not have had the range, they had like they had the horde of five second reload DPS monsterism. So they would just kind of right. like roll up on you and gun people down. It was crazy. It was for sure. It looks like uh, well, we're missing one person on NFJF side. Um, they're missing one, but there's oh, is that their player? I don't know. That might just be. I think it might be a rando <laughs> just hanging out. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations to NFJF. I um, I w without meaning any disrespect, I had actually personally had RNG as the favorite, um, but NFJF coming in very strong. I, I now have absolutely no idea. I think this could just as easily go to NFJF. So uh, congratulations to them for, you know, a hard fought victory because they they did well. I, I, I swallow my words on the uh, on the clever placement. I still don't quite know what they were doing, placing it where it was so early. I'd love to find out later. Um, 
maybe once the match is over, like, what in the hell was the was the idea behind that? What was going on? I'm curious. So, man, I I am right there with you. Like, it was it, all I could see is that it was either hey hey hey, stay behind that island. Yeah yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. We, we Sorry, yeah, yeah. I changed channels by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, hey, you know, hang behind that island. Uh, if if uh, if I see something, we'll, we'll beat the crap out of them. And then all of a right. sudden, you know, the Colbert comes out with like a baseball bat and just wham, nails somebody down. But I do have to say that after that early, I don't know, third of the game, where they use the Colbert to just slam it into C, we're taking this. And then that's exactly what they did. And then the Colbert bailed and then slammed it into Bravo, we're taking this. And then went right. mid and started applying pressure. Like wherever the Colbert went, that was like the biggest, loudest sign that NFJF was absolutely committing to this is what we're doing now. And they yeah. went there, they did it, they took it succeeded and then they move the Clabert to somebody else so it's like rather than seeing the Clabert as this kind of harass or maybe threat it was more of like a dominance play which i don't think i've ever seen a Clabert necessarily used that way but that's exactly what happened yeah yeah fair enough uh that's exactly what happened next map is going to be crash zone alpha much more spread out than warrior's path uh we'll see exactly this is where venezia could be really uh helpful this is also where stalingrads tend to shine as the islands that sort of um, the islands that sort of wedge into the two external cap zones are often really strong places for a, a Stalingrad to sit. Usually, people tend to sub out the Stalingrads for Moskvas when Stalingrad get banned. So we'll see if either of these teams uh, brings that. I'm I'm guessing what we'll see is the traditional three cap contest with three DDs. We'll see things like Des Moines, Salem, uh, maybe even Nevsky's. Uh, flanking around the outer islands, around the A and C caps, and then, you know, a hard, a hard Russian cruiser like a Moskva sitting on the corners, leading into the caps. So, I have a feeling this will be a less fluid match. This will be more of a slugfest than the last one was. What do you think is the over under on seeing some Wooster play? Uh, you know, that's interesting. I. Privately, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see someone bring a Wooster or even a Zao and make it work right. I suspect it won't happen. Um, I think that the Wooster and the Zao as true open water gunboat cruisers just won't happen. Like the, I think that's 100% due to the fact that the battleships now overmatch everything. Like the 30 mil cruisers like Wooster, uh, Zao with 30 mil decks, they get overmatched by, uh, they get overmatched by Ohio by Thunderer. Although Thunderer, of course, is not in this tournament. Ohio, um, Yamato, Shikishima. We haven't seen any Shikishimas yet. Kind of interesting, but um, I think the problem is that they they can't take a corner because they don't have the armor, um, and you need your guns. They don't have the DPM from just the forward guns like a Des Moines or a Moskva does. So you need all your guns on, which means you can't be hiding behind a rock really properly. Um, so I, I just, I, I don't think we're going to see a Wooster. I would love to see a range mod spotter playing Wooster. Just say, <laughs> screw the radar. Who needs it? Bump your, bump your firing range up to like 18 or 20 or whatever you can get it up to. And just say, well, I see a Moskva sitting on a corner. I'm going to melt it. That would absolutely make my day. Um, just a little update here, everybody. Just a little update. Um, uh, I guess NFJF had a player crash who's now... Um, I think they might be bringing in a substitute um, as a new player has joined that I'm not familiar with. So I think that NFJF may be bringing in a substitute. Looks like they're getting the last player online. Yep, he's ready. So we should be ready to go in just a moment. Okay, our uh, adjudicator is Amatsuka Uto from GGWP. He's making sure everybody's not cheating, although I can't imagine, like, I don't know, I can't imagine. If someone's, if someone brings a ship that's that's banned, like, if someone brings a small end, you just stop the game and say, well, you restart, you, you can't bring that. GG, but, we win, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's, anyone could just save a replay and say, like, here's the proof, I have it. They brought a small end or whatever. I believe uh, there's some somebody in an HR department that is right now frowning heavily, thinking, <gasps> It's policy, and uh, you just have to respect that. That's uh, that's what it does. That's true. Yeah, 
Uh, never run afoul of HR. Looks like we're getting ready to go here. So we're going to switch over to gameplay. NFJF sitting on top of this series, 1-0 to zero over RNG. Coming in on Crash Zone Alpha from NFJF, we have Conqueror Yamato. Wooster! Both sides bringing a Wooster. NFJF also bringing Goliath Yoshino. I am thrilled. Gobsmacked. <laughs> Gobsmacked. Meanwhile, over on the other side, we've got RNG bringing a Montana. Uh, newbie does like that chip. Uh... It's not a Massachusetts, but I mean, it starts with M. So, I mean, that's kind of close. Uh, also a Kremlin for some good pointing the bow at the enemy and living forever action. We do have the Wooster. We've got a Salem, a Moskva, a Nevsky, and Triple DD in a daring Marso Shima. So looks like uh, in terms of the heal threat, uh, RNG is bringing more DDs that heal than the opposite team, but uh, rare. Rare indeed. Uh, looks like uh, three DDs from both sides. Yoshino, Wooster, Goliath, Moskva versus Wooster, Salem, Moskva, Nevsky. I'm thrilled. Um, another surprise here, Conqueror coming in from NFJF. Looks like somebody wants to light every fire all the time. So um, no movement yet from Stug. I wonder if Stug... Okay, there we go. He has loaded in now. Good, good. I was wondering if we were going to have to... Um, I was wondering if we were going to have to call a mulligan there for a second. Looks like Kleber and Yu Yang doing once again that... Um, I... Clever Yu Yang, once again, going for B together. Um, Clever might pull a hard left turn and head for C here. You know, I, I have to say, I, I really feel like one of the strengths of these French DDs is they can hit their speed boost and just blitz for one of the cap circles and take it early. It's surprising to me that they haven't. I, I'm going to have to agree with that. But after the way that we saw them play the Colbert in the latch match, it really does seem like if they want to make an influence play, they've got their own little uh, mafia tough man, you know, with some brass knuckles sitting in the back pocket waiting to punch somebody's teeth out. So I, guess so. I, I don't think I ever saw that Yu Yang. I don't think I saw a CV Nep Nep use a smoke. So if that's a radar Yu Yang and they decide to make this clever turn in, then they could run down the daring, but it does look like the Colbert is backing out and the Yu Yang is going to be cat blocked. So I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. Right now we do have Darksteel using the speed of the Marceau to get into A, already a quarter capped at this time. Yeah, so uh, Darksteel using uh, exactly what we were just talking about, which is the uh, quickness of the French DDs to get into A, and uh, Braxton's gearing knows exactly what's happening there. The Yu Yang of CV Nep Nep Rebirth, um, cute name by the way scaring the daring off with that early radar uh very likely any big papa remembers oh right there's probably a clever with that yu yang um i believe the gearing of braxton is going to just find that marceau of dark steel who does in fact take a braxton may step on it any second here yes he's going to so very few points taken um not a whole lot of trading being done yet, just some BBs uh, taking some shots. However, Marcel of Darksteel now spotted by uh, the gearing. Braxton likely going to hit the brakes there and not try to engage a Marcel on his own as, well, that's just, that would be a disaster. <laughs> yeah, one has to assume, because the Marceau being blocked off by that gearing, taking some shots by a Moskva. Granted, none of them have connected, because that's a long range to shoot a Marceau at. Um, just the fact that he cannot scout, the fact that he cannot move forward to get the spot on the Wooster of X Gamer, potentially might not even see the Yamato, that I don't know. Um, without any kind of spotting, on the one hand, he's got friends. Those friends are moving into position. Right now, we've got a Torp that might... I don't know, that's a slow torp, but I don't think it's going to connect with the Salem, which means the Wooster and Salem are going to be rolling up that J-line, and suddenly that Marceau is going to have some bros if he wants to rush Braxton, even uh, even with some radar through that smoke. Over on yep. the other side, we see the Daring. <laughs> Any big papa simply waits out the enemy and takes Bravo for free after they leave, and the Clobert Yu Yang are slowly moving to Charlie, but even that is going to fall to Westos in the Shimikaze RNG, taking two caps to one before... Uh, anybody's really able to make a move about it yeah so um very interesting here as uh as in fact five ships for rng on the a cap to four for 
uh, NFJF on the A cap and uh, the same actually on the C cap. However, RNG managing to get away with C. It looks like Clever Yu Yang is going to do their PAL strategy once again on C and push that Shimikaze out. But there will be, in fact, the uh, F1 toaster Nevsky up there as uh, Braxton from NFJF's gearing taking lots and lots of fire uh, trying to get out of the A cap as quickly as possible. We'll see here if... Uh, Okay, he looks like he's dark, lost about half his health there. The Wooster of Jackie Jack now coming into play against the Moskva of uh, Capito Suita. I think that's how you pronounce that. Being spotted by the Marceau of Darksteel, or maybe even the radar of H. Nelson. But either way, lots and lots of shots going out there. Really fun to see. Gamer Kemp's Wooster also doing the same thing to H. Nelson's Moskva. Wandering Bread is able to juke a torp at the last minute, but H. Nelson is He's going to one. actually eat one. That Bonk. brings him down to 35. He's going to have some heals and potentially the ability to just back off and not be spotted. Granted, the Moskva is lit from, well, not outer space, but kind of close. Braxton still being able to spot for the moment, but if H. Nelson does go dark, he might actually just be able to back off and heal. The real surprise was the gearing of Braxton getting ripped all the way down to 10,000 health. And with a Wooster there behind an island, a Moskva, which doesn't have extreme amounts of DPS. What happens if Mark, uh, Darksteel's Marceau just uses that island to block the Wooster and runs down this gearing with everything he's got? If that DD dies, that Wooster can't play. And that Moskva is going to be stuck bow in. We could see A get completely wrapped if Wandering Bread's 86,000 health doesn't get taken off the field if this gearing is allowed to live. Meanwhile, in Bravo, we've got Any Big Papa still holding it down but not making any plays and still playing safe as RNG is just backing away from the cap even though their Shima is getting shot. Oof, big hit on the Moss for there of uh, Capito Suida as uh, yeah RNG now making an aggressive push across the A cap like you said using that Kremlin to just not die and um, pushing up into that Moskva while the Wooster and Salem shell it to death and try to light it on fire. Ooh, big hits though now onto that uh, Kremlin of Wandering Bread. Will he take a Torp? No, he will not, but he is under Withering Fire and needs to be very careful. Uh, again, the Wooster of Gamer Kemp showing just how much damage a uh, Wooster can do. Mosva getting just pummeled. But I don't know if this is the right trade as Wandering Bread will go down eventually. The question is, how much damage can RNG get off of sacrificing their Kremlin? Yeah, now that the cap is secure, Darksteel and Jackie Jack open water, murdering the Moskva. And with the death of the Moskva, the gearing can't spot, the Wooster can't spot, the M can't spot. Suddenly, we've got X Gamer Kemp, who's being dunked on and does not have the ability to return fire. A looks like the siege has finally come through, and while they lost a Kremlin to do it, that Kremlin was the battering ram that broke down the door. And I'm about to see what that siege looks like. There is a Yamato, but there's some islands, and people definitely know how to play ring around the rosy with the cruiser although dark steel with the uh fully loaded marceau if they can deal with that wooster he could absolutely run down that yamato over on the other side charlie we see a shima that took way too much damage westos has backed off with 6k as the daring of any big papa is now pushing the yu yang position potentially looking to look at charlie but with every all the success over at a and it's two caps to one rng does not need to push their luck yeah, so any big papa moving from B cap into uh, C cap to try and help them retake this. Uh, B cap going to sit there and continue to gain points for RNG as RNG is now up by about 50 points. Not a huge thing, but uh, having secured decisively to secured A cap, uh, RNG now looks to be in the more favorable position. The question is, obviously, will the clever of Erethrin be able to get around the corner and do something, i.e. put damage onto that daring in Shimakaze, which I don't think he's going to be able to. Yu Yang surely is going to stumble upon one of these two here in just a moment. Um, I may, I'm, I'm loath to leave that because it's going to happen and guns are going to happen soon. Dark Steel's Marceau, however, pushing way up. Oh, overlapping radars from uh, RNG. I hope that is not too decisive on them. And uh, yeah, goodness, lots happening. So we're going to go back up to C real quick as uh, the Yu Yang has now engaged the Shimakaze and the Daring. Shells out from the Yoshino fall short on Westos and the Shima. More shells from the Conqueror do actually click. Uh, fire was lit, but immediately put back out. A radar popped from the Yu Yang. Is he even in range? Briefly. That's going to be a shot from the Oshino. A Hail Mary from downtown. Do these Japanese HE shells connect? No, that's going to be a juke. And the Conqueror misses as well. Looks like Westo is going to get out by the skin of his teeth. And yet C continues to be locked up in the favor of NFJF. 
and yet their ships are not moving. None of the Yu Yang and nor has the Kleber moved to take any help over at Bravo while RNG continues to push that Yamato and encircle. We've got a Moskva on Wooster violence. I don't know how that one's gonna go, but I do think the Wooster out DPMs the Moskva. So that might not go in RNG's favor. That might be a bit of a crit fail. Yeah, you're absolutely right here. Something something horrible is about to happen as the Moskva is now uh he's in, he's locked into he's locked into it with uh Gamer Chem's Wooster. I believe that a Wooster will win as long as the Wooster doesn't show any side to the Moskva whatsoever. Big shots coming out from the Yamato and oh only resulting in overpens on Moskva. That's got to be frustrating. Um the question here will be can they get down this Yamato before the Moskva of H. Nelson goes down. I don't think so. I think the Nelson Nelson in the Moskva is going down as the Conqueror, now firing AP at him. Will the Salem... Oh my gosh, I just don't quite know what's going to happen here. Very, very scary. Moskva goes down. RNG has lost the advantage at A uh, to a certain degree. Points are back to about the same amount. How are they going to get rid of this Yamato before this Yamato steals their lunch money is the question. Well, it's better to be lucky than good, and RNG rolls the dice, and it comes up crit fail. Down goes the Moskva. The Wooster, still with 15k, is going to be able to get his guns in the department pretty soon. But, oh, that's some AP shells from a Salem. Bye bye oh. Wooster. He goes down, but Darksteel is uh, not having none of this crap. He built the room, dang it, and he's going to come in here with some shells. Big shells from a Yamato, just going to rip right through the Destroyer. The other ones go a little low, and that's going to be a whole bunch of Torp soup crammed right down the mouth of the Yamato. Forced unpleasantry incoming. The gearing of Braxton's going to have to bail. A is still secured as we finally see NFJF. Oh. <laughs> wow. Marceau down to the secondaries, man. Oh, that's um, why you bring those secondary flags, kids. Oh, my goodness. That... It's just, it's amazing to me how A has turned into a blood pit for RNG, but they've still got two cruisers and both of them have radar against a gearing that cannot take. While the Yu Yang of CV Nepnep is able to take Bravo, Shimikaze is not going to be able to contest 4,000 health versus a radar Yu Yang. Uh, if one of those torps connects, maybe there'll be something, but B looks like it changed hands. Any big papa working on Charlie? Yeah, so uh, things to watch here. B has been taken by NFJF. That's been a stalwart point gainer for RNG the entire time. It is now in the hands of NFJF. The question is, there are two healthy RNG cruisers in A who are now able to push up and start to wrap up NFJF's middle flank. The question is, will they start to whack on that Yoshino? I think they will as soon as uh, something can light it, which might happen soon. I don't know how stealthy the Yoshino is. Uh, shots being traded, of course, between the Daring of Any Big Papa and the Clever of Rethrin. The Daring of Any Big Papa, very healthy. Uh, overall, the ships of RNG, much more healthy than the ships of NFJF. About 191k for NFJF versus 223 for RNG. Uh, two minutes, 30 seconds until uh, RNG takes this at current point gain. So, surprisingly enough, it wasn't the Kleber that moved back to take Bravo, it was the Yu Yang. The Yu Yang, which might have actually been able to outspot and deal with the daring of any big prop up, potentially holding Charlie while the Kleber took B for free, as B was left unmanned by uh, RNG. Uh, last match, they moved the Kleber over, but not this one, and because the Kleber is outdetected by the daring, he has no way in. CV Nepnep moving over with 11,000 health against a daring with 20. Uh, there's a Goliath of Vet Bubble that needs to get out from behind that rock. It's uh, it's 200 points down for NFJF. They're going to have to make a play whether they like it or not. And with the Conqueror pushing, the Goliath coming out from behind a rock, and CV Nepnep soon to be in radar range of this daring, I have to assume that's going to be the Hail Mary that they have to nail. Yes, indeed. So what we're going to see here shortly, we're going to see the Yu Yang of CV Nepnep rebirth. Uh, spotting that daring of any big papa, it's probably going to be a pretty equal spot uh, won't last for too long. However, the Conqueror now pushing in of Prince, pushing in to sea, going to be very difficult to uh, dig out of there once he's in. Um, I think the Shimikaze and Gearing in B also going to find each other at each other's throats. One minute, 19 seconds until RNG takes this. In a moment, CV Nebnep about to step on the cap. However, I think he's about to, uh, he's about to feel the wrath of RNG here. <laughs> Um, That's a lot of shells. I do see a lot of splashes in the water, not a lot of fire on the deck. Uh, CB Nepnep did seem to make it out while any big papa is pushed. That Yu Yang very easily going to retake Charlie. 
Big question here is not whether they can take C. They just took C. They can absolutely hold it. The real question is, how are they going to hold a Bravo? They've got a Goliath that's sitting behind a rock off in the middle of nowhere. That can't help B. They've got a Yoshino that's going to be against a Salem Wooster. I mean, that's a damage threat, but that's not going to hold off a Shima. Right now, the Shima's not going to want to charge Braxton and the gearing, but as soon as those cruisers get closer, that's going to be a play they cannot afford to make. RNG wins in a minute and 40 seconds, even on one cap. NFJF has to get a kill. They've got to make a move. they got to get into it. Yeah, the key thing here is a kill. Um, RNG needs to stay alive. They. It looks to me, I'm going to be honest, I think they thought exactly what you just said, which is, all we got to do is live another minute, 23 seconds, live and protect A. You can see the Salem of Crazy Kraut actually backing up back into A, just saying, nope, I'm not <laughs> I'm not moving out. I'm not risking anything. Wooster of Jackie Jack Raidering to try and find that gearing. They're all sort of saying, we don't have to lose this. We just have to live as uh, any big Papa, F1 Toaster and newbie gamer dude, all deciding to just abandon C and stick with what they've got. Braxton's gearing now taking concentrated fire in the center. However, will he get the Shima? Shimakazi down to 1800. He goes dark. The shell. Oh, more shells coming in oh. long range down to 594. Braxton has to nail a shell. Has to nail a shell or that's going to be the point nope. game and that's going to go that. to RNG. He took his shot. It didn't happen, but it was close. It was very close. Updating the match. Winner goes to RNG, which means we will, in fact, see a game three. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, so that means we're going into game three. NFJF, RNG, basically both of these, these teams seem very equally matched to me. Um, I, I gotta be honest, it's very exciting watching these two uh, trade carefully and precisely with each other. They're both doing a great job. Um, really great matches so far. I need to step away and get some water because I'm getting phlegmy from drinking coffee with cream in it and talking too much. <laughs> so I'll be right back, gentlemen. Well, I can talk too much. So I have to say, Charlie was was interesting. It was absolutely interesting. First off, they went to Bravo. It went exactly as we had seen before. Where the Kleber goes is where a play gets made. The Yu Yang was able to take Bravo. He popped off the radar. The Daring was having nothing about doing it. And NFJF take, take the early lead over at Bravo, then moves over to C, and sure enough, claims that one as well. Where the Kle or where the Kleber goes, the, the team is gonna follow. The real surprising stuff was what happened over at A. With uh, the Marceau being pushed off, the Marceau having too much of a detection problem, but ultimately it comes down to how many friends you got. Uh, there were four friends for RNG, five friends for RNG, four friends for NFJF, and uh, RNG was eventually able to move up and take it. And even though it looked like it was secured, Whoa, it was on the edges of disaster, uh, which was absolutely surprising as the Moskva ended up taking a 1v1 that just did not go his way. And then the Marceau going down to secondaries. What a shock was that? Nonetheless, they did clean the flank. They did take it and ultimately figured, oh, wow, wait, we we have a lot of points. We can just sit on this. And RNG, uh, unwilling to roll the dice, decided to uh, play it safe. And yet... And yet, the Shimakaze being run down by a gearing, aching for a kill, was just able to make it out. Um, well, literally one, maybe two shells away from slipping some points in the opposite direction. That could have been the thing that completely was the upset, but it just didn't get sealed the deal. The smoke was able to kick off fast enough that the Shima went dark and the magic dodges happened. So yeehaw, fun match. Uh, looks like North is gonna be the next one up. We've got to see North a little earlier today. There's going to be some open water shenaniganry over at Alpha, and there's going to be some trench kind of warfare going on over at Charlie. Are they going to push the 910 line? Are they going to do the no man's land? No man's sea? Whatever. Um, in which case, huh, that's actually funny. So the Charlie cap could be no man's sea, where nobody can move up on that crap. Anyway, yep. um, it really comes down to, just like the other maps, who sneaks in to take Bravo? Because whoever is able to actually get Bravo before the other team is going to accrue a 10, 20, 30, 40 points advantage until somebody else is able to get back in there and contest it. In the last one, we happen to see that NFJF took it early, but RNG just uh, waited their time, and as soon as they left, 
took it for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and we might end up seeing that again in North. If so, whoever's the second to cap will probably hold the advantage. But as with anything, it just comes down to what ships they bring, what they do with those ships, and, uh, well, the will of RNG. Well, yeah. And uh, ironically enough, or coincidentally enough, of course, Clan RNG's symbol is, in fact, a 20-sided dice for the RNG roll. But um, I'm going to take a step away. I'm going to use the restroom. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and swap to break real quick. I'll be back shortly. needs to stay alive they it looks to me i'm going to be honest i think they thought exactly what you just said which is all <clears throat> okay, sorry about that, guys. Looks yep. like they are almost done with the ship check. Okay. So I think we're actually about to hop into game number three. Fantastic, fantastic. Amazing. Yep, looks like they're ready to go. Okay, so, uh, yeah, on north here. <clears throat> here we go. We'll just have to see uh, what exactly the clubber Yu Yang comp does uh, on north. So, coming in from NFJF, <clears throat> yep, that's uh, that's the same uh, gearing clever Shimakaze. Is it though? I don't see a Yu Yang. I guess not. No, they've uh, replaced it with a gearing or a Shimakaze. Very interesting. I'm, I'm not quite sure why they wanted to. Uh, trade out that Yu Yang, but uh, Yoshino staying in the lineup and Conqueror for NFJF. Um, looks like the only thing they've really changed, yeah, is uh, no Wooster, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I think the Wooster is just one of those things that really goes with that last map. Uh, at least the way the islands are constructed, I mean, if you can get some really good lobby shells, you're able to make some good advancing. Over on the RNG side, we've got a Montana Kremlin. So once again, we've got the big, bad, battering ram of Wandering Bread with uh, the semi-mobile kind of 30 knots whatever of newbie gamer dude with the 12 shells. We've got Des Moines, Salem, Double Nevsky, Daring Marso Shimikaze. So double Nevsky, but not really any kind of consistent smoke to be able to help the Nevskys do their thing. And it also looks like both Nevskys are heading open water. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Um, that's going to be, that's not a surprise to me to see the Nevskys go open water. We oftentimes see Nevskys at A. Um, I guess kiting in the kiting position, usually getting smoked by a Shimo or a Gearing, um, or even a Yu Yang at times. So. Uh, not a huge surprise there. Um, what is interesting, Marceau, yes, going to C for RNG. Looks like he's going the long way as well, but he's not. I can't tell if he hit his uh, speed boost. Clever gearing for NFJF for sure going way out wide to A. I don't quite know why the Clever is there, unless it's to try and open water gumboat, but I don't see that working out against a Nevsky. Every time we see the Kleber, he, uh, I don't, he, maybe he's got like, 
what is that separation anxiety you know where like you, you leave your dog at home and your dog just kind of panics and pees on the floor it could be that the colbert <laughs> is very concerned about being alone and isolated but more likely the colbert is looking for somebody else to spot for the colbert to do crazy colbert stuff um but as they are going to be rolling together uh bros before hoes so to speak that means any big papa is going to be taken bravo uh so Bs before RNGs? I don't know. Anyway, that's going to be an early point lead over to RNG while their Marceau of Dark Steel is going off on an Antarctic adventure on the 10 line while the Shimikaze of CV Nepnep is about to start taking Charlie. Yeah, so here's the odd thing about uh, where Dark Steel is going. Oftentimes, if you have a Clever or a Marceau, you can actually zing right into the sea cap. Uh, and get behind that island and be generally safe, so you can take C early. However, he chose to go the long way, and in fact, he's not even attempting to go into C the back way. He's actually just going way out onto the flank, and I don't quite know what he's thinking here. I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to cast any shade. Ooh, big hit on Wondering Bread. That's about eighteen thousand from the Conqueror there, and that's what Conqueror do. Conqueror sling he and light fire, but uh, yeah. I don't quite know what the Marceau is uh, is up to here. He's he's going way out onto the side, but he's going to run into a Des Moines, a Moskva, a Salem, and a Conqueror, and that's, well, it's not what he wants to see. Let me put it that way. Well, I'm in the dark about what the Marceau is doing, and supposedly he's in the dark at the moment as well, but really soon, C4 Growl Belgrano may actually be close enough to light him as, there it is, he's within 8.2 of a Des Moines, I'm expecting guns to open up unless the Marceau is full conceal. <laughs> Screw that, says the Des Moines, as he pops his radar and will immediately begin firing. The Marceau starts lighting into a Des Moines that has more health and bigger guns. Yep. And he's going to be clipped a little, but I think he's going to get behind the island. He'll be safe. But uh, short of getting some kind of advance notice, uh, he gave away C. So not sure about that one. Two caps to one. NFJF taking the not early point lead, but they certainly have the pressure lead as they will overtake those additional 20 points that RNG's got above them at the moment. Yes, indeed. So uh, we'll see here if C4 Graal Belgrano takes any torpedoes from the Marceau, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like the uh, Des Moines able to use its slight maneuverability and acceleration to uh, dodge those torpedoes but yeah indeed marceau not gonna be much use at the sea cap here unfortunately we'll see if he actually tries to stick himself in behind these islands and contest against the shima but for now let's go ahead and go back over to a cap where uh h nelson's nevsky now getting firing solution onto the gearing of braxton from nfjf however the nevsky is bow in against yoshino yamato clever and a gearing We'll see. I think that's a horrible mistake on uh, the part of H. Nelson to beat Bao Win against that much firepower. I think it's uh, it might end up being a little bit greedy to bet against yourself. RNG is a fickle lady, and right now she's uh, being her patience is being tested by a Nevsky that's going for that gearing. Uh, Braxton was able to light the Shimikaze, and both Braxton and the Colbert immediately started to fire, to which the Shima just smoked. Now, if that gearing had been the Yu Yang, a radar could have been used, but that's not the comp. That's not what happened. The Shimikaze gets out, and the Nevsky gets to eat more than half of the health off of Braxton. He's going back, and I think the Nevsky's going to try to go dark here with nobody close enough to spot him if he's able to get out. I don't think he's dead, but he's certainly hurt worse for wear. He is. He is certainly hurting he's down to about half health a little below he can actually heal some of that back up as the gearing cannot uh yamato getting a very nice strike in on him there uh however uh, not decisive enough as uh torpedoes now going off against the clever they will not connect the question is will westo's shimikaze eat torpedoes yes he's eating one for sure Ooh. from the gearing Ooh. that's seventeen thousand hp that's a shame you hate to see that. However, he may get out of this with the A-cap, in which case it might just be worth it. It's very difficult to tell. Let's go ahead and take a look back over here at C, as RNG has decisively taken C back, while the uh, Shimikaze of NFJF now moving into B. 
Yeah, so the Marceau actually decided to slam on in and make that influence play, and CV Nepnep had left Charlie. So the Marceau got to take it for free. Any big papa there to give some uh, moral support as he was slowly reversing into Charlie, but turns out didn't matter at all. We got a Salem of X Gamer Kemp pushing the 10 line with the Des Moines of C4 Growl staying safe, on not really looking to want to push, which is a little surprising because they just gave the cap away. Uh, one, two, three, that's a whole bunch of red caps to me. Uh, we see a Shimakaze <laughs> looking to uh, check out that Bravo. I guess he got radared by a F1 toaster. And uh, Alpha is actually falling the wrong way as we've got two different <clears throat> destroyers that are taking it. Looks like the Clobert is being shot at, which means that Braxton is going to finish off that cap. Yeah, so um, Shimakaze of CV Nepnep Rebirth here in the B cap. He is actually about to get pinched by the daring of any big papa, the Nevsky of F1 Toaster, and the Montana of Newbie Gamer Dude, all three of whom are going to have some sort of threatening uh, position. On to Nep Nep. How much damage is Nep Nep going to take is the big question. Also, how many torpedoes is Newbie Gamer Dude going to eat? Looks like just one for now. Um, looks like CV Nep Nep has managed to get away. However, yeah, the daring of any Big Papa moving in, smelling blood in the water of CV Nep Nep. Uh, looks like Nep Nep's going to get away here as A falls back to NFJF. Yeah, the Shima still got the stealth, uh, still got the stealth, still got the moves, still got the touch. As uh, any big papa continues to take some shell fire from Erythrin, uh, that Clobert not afraid to swing his weight around. It uh, doesn't like to play alone, but he does like to play with some big guns, and that's exactly what the Clobert's got. And nonetheless, any big papa with a hydro running is going to force CV Nep Nep off the grid and uh unfortunately the shimikaze's bow is pointed in the wrong way with a newbie pointed in the right way looking at that shimikaze how many torps is Monta's newbie gonna eat is still gonna be the question as there's Oof. rack number one there's rack number two and i think we're gonna have a third one coming soon maybe he's gonna hold on to it for a bit but is this shima gonna go down with 11k i think f1 toaster's radar is gonna be back up pretty soon yeah so uh braxton making a very nice dodge uh, avoiding those Shimikaze torpedoes over there, just barely. CV Nepnap just squeaking out of here. We'll see if he... Uh, <laughs> looks like he's going to land one torpedo on Newbie Gamer Dude. No, <laughs> none. Oh. Wow. Um, so now two caps to one in favor of RNG. RNG winning in four minutes on points as is. However, oh, down goes the Westo Shimikaze. From RNG, First Blood, going to NFJF as the Shima at A was killed by Yamato Gunfire. Uh, that seems a bit overkill to me. But uh, what happens now? So A was already in NFJF's favor, but now it's distinctly in their favor. I think Stug moves up, uh, starts threatening Newbie Gamer Dude, and then uh, NFJF attempts to wrap it up. Yeah, unless they're going to commit the gearing of Braxton to hunting the Nevsky of H. Nelson... I think Nelson just runs. I think he just gets the hell out of uh, town, goes, finds a rock, you know, reads some magazines or something, maybe learns about uh, the latest shortage on GPUs. CV <laughs> Nep Nep is getting shot by the Daring, and off the radar goes with F1 Toaster looking to lean in here. 5,000 damage left on the Shimikaze. Does not have a heal. More shells coming. Nevsky looking to pound. Only thing going after this Nevsky is a Kleber, and that Kleber is chucking HE, although maybe he could get Citadels at this range. 2,000. 1400 is CV Nepnep long for this world RNG looking to increase their lead as those shells are not connecting 293 there we go down goes Frazier that's going to be a 210 point lead over in the favor of RNG it's down to NFJF to do something and do something big. We've got X Gamer taking some shots over on an island, but he's got a heal. So let's see. That's a Conqueror, a Des Moines, and a Moskva that I'm pretty sure just slammed it home into YOLO. Yep, absolutely. Once again, uh, when NFJF sees the end in sight, when all else fails, put the Conqueror in the cap. And uh, that looks like exactly what they're about to do as the Conqueror moves forward to try and trade with the Kremlin. Uh, Moskva pushing up. In fact, everybody except for Gamer Kemp on the east side pushing up to try and protect that Conqueror at sea. The question is, can they get a conk uh, Kremlin down before the uh, Conqueror dies? Four minutes, 33 seconds remaining as sea has been stepped on. I don't see where NFJF can really make, make do otherwise. Um, 
Stug's Yamato is moving forward. He's attempting to get shots onto F1 Toaster's Mo uh, Nevsky, sorry, or Newbie Gamer Dude's Montana. I think shots are out on the Nevsky. Big hit can always be incoming. Does he connect? No. Complete miss. Unfortunately, the gods of RNG actually favoring RNG today. Conqueror, once again, being, uh, you know, constantly reset. There's no way he's going to be able to keep this cap. However, Moskva moving up to assist. He may be able to get... Oh, no! The gearing of Braxton from NFJF gets torpedoed. I wasn't looking. I'm a bad caster. I didn't see it either, man, but uh, that's just another nail in the coffin. It's another nail in the wall that RNG is placing between NFJF and Victory. Shell's coming out on Prince 21 as this Conqueror is getting conquered. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yep. He just got conquered. Wah, wah. Yep. So he goes down. That's 942 to 510. And as much as, as much as you can lock down and just seeing like, let's just do something every time that something happens it's not going in the way of nfjf i think rng's got this one locked but even still it's a minute and 12 seconds before the points tick with a clubair that's about to step on bravo i don't know for how long but if he does that's going to stop all the point game at least as right now Yep, um, this game, one minute to go. NFJF about to lose their Kleber in Erethrin, or maybe Daring. Any, uh, big, any Papa? big Papa goes down. If that we'll happens, see. that's points. Oh, it's so oh, close. Erethrin at 3 HP. <laughs> Erethrin living with 3 HP. However, the Moskva of Capitolo Suita. I like saying that. Uh, he is under concentrated fire. He's going to go down 10 seconds remaining until RNG walks away with this. We'll just have to see but I think we can safely call this as RNG taking this series. Lady Luck continues to smile on those that embrace DICE as their icon. RNG is going to be the decisive winner and the end game. Uh, yep. So very much congratulations to them and NFJF with that sexy little first win uh, that definitely took this all the way out to game number three. Unexpected, but nonetheless, a badass take. Uh, RNG, however, is going to outpace them, uh, going playing for the long game, going with the house odds, and uh, coming up the winner. 